Hey everybody, welcome. This is the initial podcast for The Biggest Little Victory, presented by the Victory Christian Fellowship. Uh, just getting started out, but the format that we're going to follow is this is going to be an in-depth look at the sermons that will be online ahead of time for this. So if you aren't able to attend, then you can definitely check out the sermons online on Mondays and check out this podcast on Wednesdays. So to start off, my name is Stephen. And I am Pastor Kendra. And we are going to be your hosts um, for the foreseeable future, taking you on this journey, um, going a little bit deeper into the Word. And we are definitely excited to have guests on the show. Um, so if you are interested in being on the show and sharing your opinions with us, sharing uh, ideas, something that you got out of the sermon, definitely let us know, and we'd love to have you on. Absolutely. So yesterday was our first birthday as a baby church here in Reno, Nevada. Um, <laughs> We are really excited as to what happened this first year. Um, it has been an amazing growth opportunity for a lot of people, and it has just been a very, very huge blessing for me and probably for you too. Oh, that, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely. we that we have been a part of it, and that we get to continue to see what happens in the lives of our congregation and the rest of all of us. So. Happy birthday to VCF. Um, yesterday's sermon didn't really have a title, so to speak. He <laughs> was just he was came up with one. He was just kind of talking at us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't heard that, you'll you'll hear that if you go check out the sermon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he says that those exact things. Um, but you know, we're still gonna take a deep dive into what he has to say because Pastor David, even if he doesn't have a structured thing, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> he has some idea. <laughs> right? Right? Okay. That's, that's what's definitely going to make this a, such a fun podcast, because even if we try to get notes ahead of time, they are absolutely not going to be useful Right. Um, by the time he actually says what he's going to say, because he'll just like take the notes and just throw them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we got to wait until after he's done talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mystery as much for us as it is for you. Yes. So that's the, ex that's the exciting thing about Victor, Victor Christian Fellowship. Always right. a mystery. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So you want to you wanna talk about the first thing? Sure. Yeah. So a couple of things that I caught out of there, I was just uh, trying to take these quick notes. It's sometimes it, the beauty of uh, sermons, at least for me, is that I get really involved in what's being said. And then only later does it like hit my brain like, oh, this is something you should write down. This is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so I was trying to do that. And I was trying to be more aware of that. But at the same time, I'm like controlling other elements of the service. And I'm trying to like keep my head focused. So, um, But it was just a couple of things that I, that I caught was uh, one of them was such a good quote. He said, if the church isn't full of broken people, then it must be full of hypocrites. And I don't Amen. Think it, yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's the podcast. Bye, everybody. Yeah, that's it. Thank you all for tuning in. <laughs> just, oh man, I, yeah, that to me was just it, it really hit me. And, and I think he, he worded it a little bit differently, but that's just kind of like the the gist of what I got out of it. Like, wow, if it's if you can ask everybody in the church and say, oh no, everything's fine with me. I'm I'm doing fine. My spiritual fate, my spiritual walk is fine, and um, I'm. In, in sync with God, and I think if every single person in the church is saying that, that there's nothing going on, I don't need any prayer, I think that's where you have, that's where the hypocrites, that's where the hypocrisy comes in, because I, I can say, certainly, that I'm not always 100%, I'm not always in sync with God, there are a lot of days where it feels, and you know, it might sound unchristian, but you know, there's days that it doesn't feel like, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be in my Bible, I don't want to pray today, it just feels like a chore, and it's definitely not how I want it to feel, but Sometimes it's just how it is. And there's never a time that I could say that, oh, I'm no, I'm good. I'm not broken. There's nothing wrong with me. Right. Yeah. And I mean, just like you said, there are days where you, and Pastor David said it too, you know, where you have those days where you're like, why God? Why yeah. is this happening? Yeah. You know, and you're not going to find your answers in the Bible. You're not yes. going to find your answers from prayer, you know, but dang does it help <laughs> no like at the end of the day even if you do not want to do it you feel better afterwards you yeah. know and that's basically it and if you know it's like like you said again you know if you if you're talking to somebody and they say that everything is perfect i don't want to call them a liar but they're lying <laughs> you know? i don't want to call it to your face but by the way <laughs> yeah, right just be like mm, 
Don't lie to me. <laughs> you well, know. let's be real here. <laughs> yeah, right. right? Because nobody's lives are perfect. Whether it's, you know, oh, I'm out of gas and I don't have time to go get gas. Or I don't have the money to go get gas. Or right. my cat missed the litter box or something. <laughs> you know, there's, there's so many things that, that are tiny, but they're imperfections. But if somebody tells you that they're perfect... They're they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> call them out. <laughs> you don't have to call them out. But <laughs> no, there's uh, there's there's a humility in being able to admit that not everything's perfect. And I think sometimes with churches, you have that tendency to be afraid to admit that something's wrong because a lot of churches. And I don't want to point any fingers. I'm not trying to bash the church at all. It's just sometimes going to church for me, uh, growing up, it just always felt like I had to smile. Everything had to be good. Sunday, you got to be smiling. Everything's great because God is great. And oftentimes, you know, the, the worship pastor starts out and says, you know, let's let's pray because this is this is a new day. It's a new day dawning. Everything's great. Everything's everything is taken care of by God. We don't have to worry about anything. And there were just a lot of days I didn't feel like that. I didn't feel like everything was good and fine. Like there were a lot of days that I was just crushed and destroyed. And for whatever reason, I felt like I still had to smile. So I think. There's that humility in being able to say, you know what, I, I wish I could smile today, but today is just rough, and I just need your prayers. Yep. So, I, and I think that's the best thing about BCF, yeah. is that we can all do that. Oh, yeah. yeah the, the, the things that I've told people, are just, uh, you know, when they ask me, like, how are you doing? I said, do you, do you want the real answer, or do you just want me to say that I'm fine? Do you just want to say fine or good? And they said, no, tell me, tell me how what's really going on and say, okay. And, you know, and tell them about the, you know, these really deep things that I'm struggling through and the reactions that I'm not getting that were, they weren't like, oh, uh, yikes. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry about your bad luck, bud. <laughs> and then you just, they just walk away. It was, it was more so just like, wow. And, you know, like, I, I know what that's like, or, you know, I don't know how to relate to that, but hey, I'm, I'm praying for you. And listen, anything you need, you let me know. Seriously, anything. That was the kind of response that I'd get from people here. And that's what really drew me in was the sincerity of the people here. And that was what really touched me, was just how real people were with me and how willing they were to listen to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. But that's, that's I mean, and that goes right into another point. Like, uh, love, it must be sincere. Like, it, it can't just be something that we say on the surface. Uh, it can't just be that we say that we're Christians and we love, but then we don't go anywhere with that. We don't we don't physically show it. Right. You know, just saying I love you to someone it it's great and it's great to hear. Yeah. But if you don't show that you love someone, it's not the same. <laughs> it's one hundred percent not the same. And that's in every yeah. single relationship, whether it be a friendship or mm -hmm. a pastor to congregation or a marriage yeah. or a boyfriend girlfriend relationship. You know, if one person is showing it and the other is not, that one other person is going to be like, Well, what the heck? <laughs> you know, like, it, you know. It's an it's an unbalanced scale. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's an it's an unbalanced scale. If one person is putting in all the work to show love, and the other person is just kind of there, I mean, what's what's kind of the use of that? You know, mm -hmm. it's. I mean, it's it's not so much the you know what's the use of that, but even just why 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 put in half effort? Why let somebody who is trying to show you love and just let them have to do all this work for this relationship while you're just I don't know idling right sitting there it, i don't know it's just it doesn't it doesn't make any sense and i think that's a lot of times we see that with thoughts and prayers mm -hmm. the good old thoughts right. and prayers <laughs> and social vibes. media yeah <laughs> good vibes sending good vibes your way you yeah. know just i hope things get better and it's like that's great but i could really use five bucks right you know and it's yeah. like what good does just saying thoughts and prayers do for somebody that just needs five dollars right you know and that, that doesn't help them at all so right and i mean it's it I mean it shows in everything with your love of god you yeah. know and Pastor, Pastor David said it perfectly yesterday, you know, if, if you are a Christian, people will know you're a Christian without you telling them. Yep. And that is because the love of God is so intense within you that yep. someone will just look at you and be like, wow, I want to know what they're on. I'm on Jesus. <laughs> I want to know what they're taking. <laughs> We're not condoning any substances. No, except for Jesus. <laughs> except for Jesus. It's the only yeah. substance you can be on. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 
love love must be sincere love mm-hmm. must be real it must it must translate beyond just saying hey i love you to hey i love you and this is how i'm serving you this is what i'm doing for you it love always translates into action in some in some form sometimes it's just a hug sometimes it's just five bucks sometimes hey come over for dinner yeah come you over know. for dinner or hey you need a room i have a i have a room that kind of a thing it it, it really doesn't have limits Mm-mm. when you have unconditional love especially i mean we have if we're supposed to replicate, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but you know, the, the, if you're supposed to replicate the love of God, which is supposed to be unconditional right. and unlimited, then what does that mean for us? That we're supposed to love unconditionally and unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like it, and the church has to look like that. And uh, it has to look like that in, in everything that we do. It has to be more than just a place where a bunch of strangers are just saying hi, and then we walk out the door and go our separate ways. Right. Uh, a true church family is one that is interconnected and able to just trust each other. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, that goes into the next point, you know, <laughs> like where people don't want your checks, checklist Christianity. Oh, man. That is, that's, I mean, that's, that's it. I don't, I wasn't in the sermon yesterday. I unfortunately <laughs> missed that because I was teaching the little ones about the commandments, but um, so I didn't really you're, hear. You were teaching the checklist. <laughs> I was teaching the checklist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I was teaching the checklist of what, what, don't do them, but we don't want this. <laughs> don't want this. I think that's, uh, a, a checklists are good for kids. They need boundaries. They do. So they do. They then you do get older them. and then you, do, you need, okay, you're an adult now. You can go beyond the checklist. <laughs> right, right. But so I don't, I don't, I don't remember. Did he, I, from what I listened to earlier, did he go into your, ch- the checklist of what the checklist actually was it wasn't it wasn't so much um actually so this is where my short-term memory comes into play because i don't quite remember everything either but i think from what i from what i did gather is that the checklist wasn't so much like a list of like um of like uh what a, what a good christian what does. a good christian yeah. is it's kind of just like what you do because you feel like you have to right. so it's like oh i read my bible okay did that today i pray uh, before i pray before every meal i prayed before every meal good i'm mm-hmm. good there um i went to church on sunday awesome you know it's like i it's, never drop a curse word i, I never drop a curse word yeah. you know what, whatever it is that we make up in our society for what the checklist is for a perfect christian what you're supposed to do as a perfect christian i think that's uh that's kind of the idea is it's not so much about making sure that you're doing all these things correctly and then that way that makes you close to God because I think there are a lot of people who have left the church because they did the checklist right. and they didn't feel anything. They said, why am I doing this? I'm so stressed out. I'm so tired and I'm constantly you know, reading my Bible. I'm highlighting passages, memorizing verses. I'm in a Bible study seven days a week. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I don't feel any closer. Why am I doing this? And they quit. And I think the biggest thing now for us where we're trying to show that it's not about the checklist is even for people who have left the church, there are, I would say, a good percentage of them that are still looking back and seeing everyone else who's still in the church. Right. And see, did I, did I miss something? Is there something that I missed? Because while I was there, I was just stressed out and tired. Yeah, we're and all broken and not living by the checklist. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and I think sometimes it's like they're, they're wondering, like, maybe... Did they, are they doing something that I'm not? And I think that's kind of the, where the critical side of it is for those of us who are professing to follow after the teachings of Jesus and the life of Jesus is they're looking at us to see if we have something they don't. Are we able to be more joyful in troubled times? I mean, it's not the same as saying don't cry. I and mean, Obviously, you can cry. You can have bad days. Jesus had bad days. He cried. I'm a strong advocate for crying. <laughs> crying is so good for you. Crying, okay, if you, if you want to even take it scientifically, crying releases toxins from your eyes. So there you go. Okay. There's a scientific reason if you need one. Right. I just feel way better after a good, long, hard it's, cry. It's a pressure release. People underestimate the power of tears. Yeah, just watch Moulin Rouge and you'll cry. So it's fine. <laughs> Or if you saw the Super Bowl ad last night from Google. Oh, was, gosh. Uh, I yeah. a full room of us crying. That was insane. <laughs> and it was silent. There was no talking during that There was that no ad. talking. Was that was Yeah, that was the only ad where not a single person was talking. And at the end, it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like half of the room that we were in was crying. So, yeah. It was awesome. And so, Pastor David felt the need to point it out. So. Yeah. <laughs> so he's not a perfect Christian either. Right. <laughs> 
So there's our Google plug. There you go. Go check, right, go right. check out the Super Sponsor us, Google. <laughs> <laughs> go check out the Super Bowl ad if you missed that one. Um, yeah. man, that it was, was insane. It that was, was good. It very was really powerful. Well um, very powerful. Yeah. No, it, it, crying, crying is a huge press release. And I, I think a lot of people don't wouldn't blow up as much as we do when we're just at our limit. If we just had a chance to cry about it for a second and just release... And, be, and then be able to go from there. Anyway, I don't know. And nobody it. has to know that you cry. <laughs> no, you can no. do it behind closed doors. <laughs> <laughs> this is a turn to a podcast on tears. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> the science behind crying. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the real title of today. <laughs> so, we're going back to... Uh, <laughs> what we're here for. <laughs> what we're here for. So, go, wrapping up some of these points together. Let's, let's put some of these together. So, if, if you know Christ, others will see it. The way that you live people are going to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the church isn't full, if the church isn't full of broken people, if no one can say that they're broken, then it's full of hypocrites. There are people that are lying about it. There's, there's, there's brokenness somewhere. And that's not to point fingers or blame or shame anyone for being broken because anyone can get broken at any point. Uh, you look at any of the stories of the disciples or the apostles and the things they went through, they weren't always happy-go-lucky people. They had lives too, and they had a lot of stress factors going on as well. And you know, they were they were sorrowful, and that's that leads us down into you know not going off of the checklist, but going off of what you know in your relationship, what you know in relationship with God, what you know in relationship with um, others in the church. That it's not it's not about how you look on the outside and how many things you're doing right, but just about the integrity of your character. Absolutely, uh, I think that's something that's certainly missing from our society. Is integrity. Sometimes I, I I wish there was more integrity, especially with and this is the only time I'm really going to get on this is just with politics. It's just having people who are in leadership positions who hold the position with honor and integrity. I wish we had that. I really do. Yes. Um, I think most people do too. <laughs> I think I think 99% of the world believes. I mean, not even here in America, everywhere else too, you know, so it is. Yeah. It's it's become a bonker system. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Um. The biggest thing uh, for me that I got out of this, the, the biggest point that I looked at um, was the the idea of being patient in our afflictions. I think that was so hard. That's been so hard for me. I have been, I guess, in an affliction for a long time now. Uh, most of my 20s have just been rough. And coming to the end of that, you know, about to turn 30, and man, it... There's just some. There's just been some moments where I, I've always kind of wished. I've always done this thing where I, I try to see myself, like see myself as tackling this problem. Mm-hmm. I'm going up this hill, like struggling against this problem. And there's often times that I just wish I was on the other side. Well, of course, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm tired of this. Can I just be on the other side? I'm just trying to picture. I would always as some, and it's actually helped me in some cases where I'm just like picture myself on the other side of this problem. Like it's okay. In just a few days, this will be over. I'll be, I'll be past it, and everything will be fine. Um, but I think for some some recent afflictions, it's been really hard to be patient with that and actually work through it because I just want to hurry it up right. and just be done. Well, to go back to your mountain analogy, yeah. you know, it also depends on the size of the affliction. Right. You know, it could be a, yeah. ga- a grassy knoll where the hobbits live, and it's just this <laughs> tiny little tiny little bump where you just have to just, you just have to walk over it. You yeah. know, but it, that doesn't mean it's not inconvenient. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like tripping on the sidewalks. Right, or not losing, that big of a deal, but losing it's... <laughs> my car keys or yeah. oh, man. tripping on the sidewalk, like you mm. said, you know, and it's just you know, and then there's the Everests yeah. of afflictions, yeah. you know, from everything from divorce to death yeah. to lose to loss of anything, loss. you know, and so it's I don't remember. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's all right. We'll keep that in. It's okay. That's, that's how people know it's authentic. I was supposed to go somewhere with it, and I just kind of lost it. I got stuck on Everest somewhere. <laughs> we'll find you. We'll send the Sherpas up. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll get you off. <laughs> no, I, uh, for me, just as you were talking about that, I was, I was thinking about, like, I, I think that another thing is, too, like, when it's sometimes you're tripping over something small, whether it's a little hill or it's a big Everest problem, that uh, we have to remember that the hardest part about that is no one can tell you how to feel with it. So if 
if it's stressful for you, if it's dire and it hurts and it's painful, no one can tell you, oh, that's not that big a deal. Look what I went through and play the comparison game. You know, there's always that one person who's like the topper. They're like, oh, you think that's bad, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and they always have mm-hmm. they always have this big long story of like something that was so horrible, and it ends. It's usually something like dramatic, like something out of right. an action film, like yeah. we were hanging out of the plane by your fingertips, and right. you're just like, and then Chuck Norris showed up. <laughs> and <laughs> well, I'm really sorry that happened, but <laughs> I think you're stretching that a little bit. I'm still I'm still going through this thing over here. Right. It's like, oh, I stubbed my toe. Well, I stubbed my. But, you exactly. Know? Yeah, there's always a topper. That, and it doesn't help. No, it doesn't. It does not help. That's not what we're here for. We're here to say, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. What can I do? Yeah. yeah right, what, exactly. How can I help? And uh, I think that's the hardest part is going when you're trying to be patient in the affliction is understanding that no one can tell you how to feel. And sometimes that's hard because there's been times, I don't know, that maybe that's just me, that I've almost wanted somebody to be able to tell me what I'm going to feel. You know, give me a heads up. Like, what's coming? How depressed am I? And how do, am I going to get more so? Is it going to get worse? Or am I at the bottom and I can start working my way back up from here? I think that's the hardest part for me is sometimes I wish I had that manual to go through of uh, the calamities. Like, how to how to work through a calamity. Like, right. 101. <laughs> I think everybody would like that book. <laughs> uh, and if you find one, yeah, if I, <laughs> let me borrow it. I'll let you know for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I remembered what okay. I was saying. Yeah. Is that no matter if it's a big hill or a small hill, mm-hmm. a hobbit hole or an Everest, you will always make it over it. Okay. That's what I was trying to get. There we go. <laughs> That's I remembered it finally came to me. Is that and the best part about that is is that, you know, the reason why we're able to get through it is because of our faith. Our faith. You know, our, our faith our and community. our yes, our community, our church, our just the everything that we have, you yep. know what I mean? And that shows that, that that's one of those things where it's like if you are one with Christ, people will see it. Mm-hmm. And even Absolutely. if you are going through what you're going through, regardless if it's a stubbed toe or a loss, mm-hmm. if you are mm-hmm. with Christ, people will see that you can fight through it and that you can still be you, but you're still broken. There's mm-hmm. this, you know, we're good. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, you know, like he will oh, always good. watch us through it. Yeah. You know, he will help us get over that effort. He will help us heal what we need to be healed. Right. You know, and as long as we believe in that, and as long as we have our fellow believers with us, that there's nothing better than that. No. You know, no, like, there's not. This super, super terrible thing is happening, but we have this, and that's the best part about it. You know what I mean? And that's just that tiny little day glow in the darkest night. You know what I mean? And that's what I like about the song. And I think bad things are happening. Yeah. You know, is that, you know, I have a phone full of people who I can text <laughs> yeah. from the church. You know? And, and, and know that they're going to answer and, and be there. not yeah. judge me. Right. You know? Yeah, not judge. Yeah. Boy, that's big. Yeah, not judging another human being for their affliction or their problem or their addictions even you know what i mean there's just so so many things that we can judge people on but you're not going to judge people because <laughs> you're broken too <laughs> yeah, there's there's accountability and there's judging it's like if, if someone has asked you to be you know hold them accountable that's one thing to say hey do you really think you should be doing that you know that's different than saying oh look at that guy right. look what he's going through glad i'm not him yeah Oh man, and that, that's 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 something that I I love about what real Christianity is, and you know, with people that I talk to that are outside of the church, and I ask them what is something that really turns you off the of church? Why don't you want to go to church anymore? Or why did you stop? Or why have you never gone? A lot of times they they tell me it's just because people aren't real, mm-hmm. and so again the hypocrisy comes in. So it's it's people aren't real. They don't seem to really care. Uh, I have better relationships with people just, you know, my friends and family than I ever did with anyone in the church. Or Christ himself. Or Christ himself. And they just have, there's a lot of trust issues. And it's trust issues because they're well-deserved. Because they would tell somebody something and then it somehow got around to the whole church. Or they'd tell somebody something and then that person just never talked to them again. So they just felt judged, they felt unwelcome, and they didn't feel like they could be real. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, the, 
really. That's the kryptonite for most churches. It's the kryptonite. It's if people can't be real amongst you, it doesn't matter if you have the greatest worship team, the best facilities, the greatest staff. Like none of that matters. None of that uh, superficial setup matters. Because if people can't be real, then you're not going to get authentic answers when you're asking questions. You're not really going to know how people are doing through the week. And when things get really hard, they're just not going to tell you. And what's the point? <laughs> what's the point of being a church family at that point if someone can't even trust you to say, hey, you know, my family's going through this time, pray for me, because they're just afraid that somehow it's going to leak out, it's going to get out to everyone, and you can't be trusted to keep a secret. I don't know. It's... If you can't, if people can't be real with you, then they're never going to find the real Jesus. Right. They're going to be constantly distracted by what we have created as this whole church concept. Mm -hmm. You know, and the early church, they met in homes. They didn't have buildings. They didn't have podcasts. They didn't have worship services. You know, they didn't have all these crazy things. Well, and some of it's crazy. I shouldn't say entirely crazy, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> they didn't have they didn't have a lot of what we have today. We, we the church has changed over the years, and it's it's changed with the times. But at the same time, uh, if the root of it is if the heart of the church is not healthy, mm -hmm. then we can't expect the rest of the body to be either. Right. The church is not the building; it's the people. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's who we are. Right. Which is who we are. Right. Which brings us to God's people are not just Christians. They are everyone who has ever lived. That one's hard. That one is hard. <laughs> that one is really hard. Because, really I mean, hard. you have to think about the people who have done really bad things. There's, yeah, there's... <laughs> like Ted Bundy and to, Hitler and... <laughs> yeah, no, and, and to, to love... And, I mean, of all the things that... I mean, most people know me. I'm not a very... It's difficult to get me riled up and aggressive. Like, I have a lot of patience. But of all the things that could get my blood boiling in an instant, it is just... People who hurt children, oof. I can't stand them. I Big can't. Oof. I, yeah, and it's 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 a trigger point for me. I mean, I grew up. There were kids on my street, and like I was kind of like their the unofficial babysitter of the neighborhood. And it was a lot of fun, and like getting to watch them grow and like learn and um, and just kind of be there for them, just kind of guide them to you know a better life towards that's free from being a menace to society or whatever it was. You know, we would just play games, and um, it was a lot of fun, but just to think about somebody ever hurting a child and why like right. <laughs> i don't know it, it, it's it's always been something that's really been hard for me to get over and that's why i mean real talk that there were some verses in the old testament that i had a really difficult time the entire settling old, with the other and the entire old testament is sometimes hard to deal with it's really it, it, yeah i mean you have i mean it's it's there for a reason it's and, there for a reason yeah but when you think about it, you know, there's, it talks about this, this God who's the same God of the New Testament, contrary to what most people think, that God changed his mind from the Old Testament to the New Testament <laughs> and became this wholly happened. different person. No, God did not change. No. God's still the same. He still hates sin. But the way that... But he's not bombing places he's not, for sin. You know? he's, he's not telling the Israelites to go wipe out an entire civilization. And I would read these stories and I would see, you know, where God says to go and, you know, wipe out their army. And it's like, okay, yeah, I understand that. Mm. But then he would say the women and children too. And that's where, that's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm just like, what did the kids ever do? Why the kids? I never, under, and I still today, I still don't fully mm. understand it to be, to be completely honest. Right. Uh, why the kids? Why did the kids have to die? And so, I don't know. It's just, they've always just had a special place in my heart. And to know that, those people are still loved by God. Those people were still are still given the chance to be redeemed and that Jesus died for them as much as they died for me. Uh, I don't like that. No. I don't, I don't like the way you just put that. I, <laughs> like, like, but it's, <laughs> I don't either. I get where you're coming from. <laughs> I don't either. Like, <laughs> I'm just as guilty of sin if in God's eyes. I mean, in our society, clearly, you know, if I'm telling little white lies here and there versus somebody who's hurting kids that's a whole different thing in our society obviously but yeah. sin is sin to god so i'm just as deserving of hell as someone who does that and that's hard for me to accept that those are god's people too yeah uh, the god is hoping for them to even be redeemed even those people which is yeah i you know what i understand you 100 percent, and you just kind of opened my <laughs> eyes to a new thing that i gotta think about i mean not 
think, think about it. Like, I'm not going to change my mind on anything, but, or my heart on anything, <laughs> but you know, that's, that's, that's very, that's very in depth. What you just said, I, uh, make me think Stephen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I make myself think a lot. There's, there's a lot of times where I'm just, I'm just thinking about things throughout the day or I read a passage and I walk away from it. And sometimes I don't even have, if you can't tell already, I don't always have my thoughts all together, but when I do, when it, when it becomes clear to me is when it, it just really hits and then I'm just, I'm done for the day. Like I'm just spending hours because it's God teaching me these principles and then I'm just caught on these principles and thinking, wow, what am I supposed to do with that? How, how do I live with that? How do I continue with that? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have an answer for you. <laughs> I, I do not have an answer for you, but when you find that out. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a few things I need to tell <laughs> When I give you the manual yes, of life. Yes, and when exactly. I <laughs> exactly. And you're, you're, only, you're only like a year be, and a half older than me. I'm just going to be searching for it. <laughs> This is what it's like to almost be 30, I guess. <laughs> you got to really, really, really think about what's going on in life. <laughs> Start to become aware. <laughs> uh, we can go. We can we're gonna go to something more happier, happier note. Yes, please. That would be great. <laughs> to something better. Yeah. Um, let's be used by God to do something more for our community. Let's be active in our communities in ways that is just not, it's not just saying like, hey, here's our church. We served some homeless people today. Yay us and no. walk away it has to be something more than that it has to be something that you're every day like it being a part of a church is not sitting back and waiting for the church leader or the bible study leader to come up with one event that you do once a month to go serve people being a part of church is every day whether you're with people or on your own you're out there in the community you see somebody on the side of the road and you know you could probably help out and you stop and help them or you see somebody who you know needs help with their house, or just, it doesn't even have to be help, it can just even be how you treat others. A text message. A text message. Um, I think even one of the hardest parts is treating others how they deserve, mm. um, rather than just giving back to them what they gave to you. So someone insults you, somebody is horrible to you and discredits your entire uh, capabilities based on physical appearance, based on your background, where you came from, where you happen to be born, someone just discredits you and decides that you're not as valuable because you were born in this other place, whereas they were born here. So now they have more value than you. How do you treat somebody like that? We could either throw it back in their face and say, well, yeah, I was born there and it's better than here and get into this whole competition or you treat them better than they deserve. You treat them and take the high road. You treat mm -hmm. them better than what they think, what they're planning on. Right. Yeah, and it's like that's like the whole bully mentality. Bullies, the bullies are looking to get you riled up because then their whole plan succeeded. That's right. like that's yeah. like the whole plan is to get you riled up. And once you're riled up and you're fighting back, that's what they wanted. That's what they wanted that's, the whole time. They just wanted to fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but if you're like, okay, well, have a good day. You know, <laughs> I'll pray for you. They're like, what? Yeah. And uh, then they they don't bug you again. <laughs> <laughs> Not because you said you pray for them, but because you didn't get angry. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Really. <laughs> and if it is because you said you'd pray for them, well, sorry. <laughs> you I'm can't still stop gonna pray for praying. you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, I won't pray right here. I'll <laughs> disappear and go pray somewhere else. <laughs> right, but I'll add you to my list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think uh, here's my challenge for doing something more for your community is being a better representation of Jesus mm. in our society, in our conversations. I think that's the biggest one right now, especially with 2020, it's an election year, mm. conversation. We need to find middle grounds yes. with people. We need to find areas where we can agree, because I bet we agree with people who think differently than us more than we realize. I mean, just as an example, if you take the gun debate, and you say one, you take one person on the left who doesn't like guns at all and says, we need to get rid of guns, less guns in society. I don't like guns being around me or my family. I don't feel safe with guns. And you take someone on the right and they say, well, I need a gun. I, I feel safer I feel with safe a gun. With guns, yeah. I feel safer by having this at my disposal. I feel safer by, you know, my neighbor has it and he can run to my aid if I need to because the police are 20 minutes away. And if someone's breaking in my house, I don't have 20 minutes to wait for them to get there. And... When you take a look at both of these individuals, they seem like they're just disagreeing, but ultimately, what are they both concerned about is safety. 
it's a, it's a middle ground topic that they can both agree on that safety is important to me. And I view it this way and you view it that way. Okay, well, you're both concerned about safety. Now, how do you work together? Right. And I think that is the huge part of conversations that's missing is finding that middle ground, finding that understanding with the other person rather than plugging our ears and just saying, oh, you think differently than me, so never talk to me again. And right. <laughs> you're clearly wrong, and I'm just going to keep yelling louder and louder until you eventually stop talking and go away. Right. Or, you know, <laughs> you screaming at me about your opinion is not going to make me change mine. Right. You know what I mean? But I'm more than willing to see yours. Exactly. You know, that's, that's pretty much how you got to approach it, is you and I may not agree on something. Right. And that's okay. And that's fine. That is totally 100% fine. okay. I bet in churches there are more disagreements than are actually discussed. Yes. There's probably people on both sides of the aisle, whatever the debate is. It doesn't even have to be around politics. It could even be around your friends who are atheist or believe differently. Mm-hmm. They're Muslim, they're Mormon, whatever it is. Uh, whatever different beliefs they have, you can find common ground with those people. And uh, something that my uncle always used to say that I really love is, what unites us is stronger than what divides us. And I love that. What unites us as people, just as people, is stronger than what divides us. We can think differently on our beliefs, think differently on what we want out of life, but we can be united for Christ in a way that... I mean, right. <laughs> I kind of lost what's going on. No, that's okay. See, it happens. You just go off on these tangents and you're like, I'm not sure I where I was so supposed hard. to end this, but I'm, so hard I'm to... just going to keep going. <laughs> But I mean, that's why, I mean, our, the pastoral staff here is huge. Mm. You know, we have eight pastors here, about yeah. to be nine, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. So it's, we have, we have a pastor for everything, you know? And Lewis, Pastor Lewis is our outreach pastor. Mm-hmm. And so he is the one who is, his sole, like not sole job, but <laughs> his main job is to go out into the community and teach people what VCF is all about, yep. you know? And not even just VCF, what church should be about. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's that's ultimately like what we're doing as a church. You know, he's just the face of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I mean, I I I've had people I've I through the year that we've been we've been open and thriving. Um, I've seen people come and go, mm-hmm. but I've also seen people come and stay. Yeah, and that is that's that's the main thing for me. Is that even though, you know, as, as Pastor David says, we are now the second underchurched city in the United States, oh. which is insane That's, because the United States is huge. It's huge. And, and the, for Reno, right, of all uh, places, it right. just doesn't seem like. Right. Well, he said, I mean, he said it in his sermon yesterday, you know, in 1886, it was a, it was a place for people to run away. From, I did not know that. You know? Like, I know the West was, was built off of people who typically were either running away from their families or just running away from what life was. But Right, well, we were also, like, the divorce capital of the world. You just yeah. go in and take a ticket and be divorced in 20 minutes, you know what I mean? Now right. it's, like, not that way, thank goodness, but... It's still quick. It's... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's still quick. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but, you know, not if, if the two parties... Well, yeah. Anyway, we will get that. Not, not the point. The point is, is that <laughs> the point is, is that you know we we have a responsibility yeah. as a church, and as you know, it's not in our name that we are a Nazarene church, right. you know, and so it is our responsibility to go out into the community and just show love, right. you know, and show that hey. Not all Christians are super to the book, Bible thumping, <laughs> God fearing people. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You know, and that's that's the best part. That's the best part is that we know what we believe, but we're not going to sit here and tell you what you should believe. Exactly. <laughs> you yeah. Know what I mean, like There's never... you are entitled to do whatever you want, yep. just like we are. <laughs> we are entitled to believe what we want. We are entitled to say what we want. First Amendment. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, just, <laughs> I'll just add to that. Everything, like as Paul said, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Yes. Uh, but yeah, there there is a lot of good that comes out of diversity. And I think sometimes it's, there's, there's a confusion around denominations and why there are so many denominations. 
and but the core is the same. The core is the same. In all of those denominations. Be. Yeah. You yeah, know, we might disagree on was it seven literal days of creation or was it the four and a half billion years, you know, is modernly accepted by most scientists. Right. Uh, whichever it is, it doesn't take away from the gospel of Christ. Right. Uh, so there's, there's a lot to be gained out of, um, or I, sh- I should say, a lot to be gleaned from different denominations. Um, rather than it seeing, being a negative thing, I think it's kind of cool because you get a whole different perspective on the word. You get a whole different perspective on how God fits into your life by listening to people who think differently than you. If you just keep listening to people who are only the same as us, then I think we miss out on a lot of yes. uh, learning, alternative and, opinions. Yeah, yeah. Learning, yeah, yeah, we don't really learn. Right, yeah, because I mean, I, I, one of my, one of people, a person that I know is a Muslim, and mm. we can sit and we can talk about religion for hours and hours and hours, and even though we have different beliefs, we don't disagree, right. you know what I mean? And that's the best part about it, you know, is that, hey, we're having a civil conversation right. about our beliefs, and we're not trying to change the other's opinion. You know, we're not trying to change that, oh, well, you believe this, well, I believe this version of it. And <laughs> Let me show you how you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly, you know, and that's, that's, I mean, that's the best part about being part of a church community, yeah. you know, is that we're here, we're here if you need us. We're here to listen to you, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, once again, I forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably start writing stuff down. <laughs> <laughs> First podcast, it's okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be more structured next week, I promise everybody. <laughs> but anyway, your turn because I can't remember. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, there's a lot to be gained out of, and I, I love that. I love that story that that you can just be able to sit down with somebody of a completely different faith and talk, and just be able to talk calmly, rationally, mm. friendly, and you know, and but you learn. You learn. You mm. learn so much, and there's that should always be the goal of everyone, regardless of where you are in your faith, whether you have believed in God since you were a child, and that's never changed, and you've never thought differently. Learn from other people. Uh, learn from other walks of life and how mm-hmm. they see things because the only way you're going to reach people who think differently than you is if you're able to understand where they're coming from. Love that. That was amazing. <laughs> that was a great way to put it, Stephen. You're welcome. <laughs> Did you remember where you were? No. No? That's okay. Well, we're probably going to start wrapping up here. Um, as we said, if you missed the sermon, definitely check it out. It is available on uh, Podbean or Apple Podcasts or Google Play. Um, it should be available on Spotify soon if it isn't already. Apple Podcasts is a little wonky right now. It is a um, bit. So the most recent one is at the bottom of the year. I actually found out how to fix that. Okay, good. So we're in the process of fixing it. Well, it's uh, <laughs> it's on the personal it's on the personal level. So you, basically, it, it's kind of a weird thing. Um, if you're going into your Apple Podcasts for whatever reason, they design it this way that. Um, you have to go into the podcast that you subscribe to, and then you go into the settings, and from there, you can change it so it displays by most recent to oldest. Oh, okay, so. good to know, because I was trying to find it this morning, and I'm yeah. like, why is it... <laughs> yeah, it's on it's on user user setting okay. basis. So. so, not Apple Podcasts' fault. <laughs> not, user error. Not blaming Apple. <laughs> <laughs> I, I found this out myself the hard way, yes. so it's okay. Okay, awesome. Um, but yeah, and, so. um, you know, starting next week, we will actually have a, you know, yesterday's sermon was fantastic, don't mm-hmm. get me wrong, Absolutely. but there was really no structure to where we, you know, like there was no title. There was no title. It, right. it wasn't a one singular point, right. and that's kind of how we got all these different points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... From now on, when there is more single singular points, mm-hmm. it'll be a little bit easier to talk about and, you know, all that stuff. I mean, we had a pretty good time talking about it today. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, but, yeah. you know, we'll have more Bible verses to share with mm-hmm. you and um, more in-depth things about what that particular sermon was about. This one was kind of just a happy birthday and, <laughs> you know, what, what we should be as Christians. Exactly. And I think that's a good one to start on. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great I mean, one to it wasn't start the, the first yeah. of, It's not the first of the year, but it's still a year anniversary for mm-hmm. us. And so, yeah, that's, it's, it's huge. Knowing, knowing what kind of church we should, what we're aiming for. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have a direction, you're not going to go anywhere. You need mm-hmm. to know where you're going. Right. Yep. 
And, you know, so, and check out our other podcasts, like he said, uh, of Just the Sermon. Uh, we're on mm-hmm. YouTube as well. Um, we're going to be working on some other podcasts, but those will be a couple <laughs> months out. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but yeah. just, you know, we're, we're excited that you're here with us on this journey Absolutely. and this learning experience. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, have a great week. Um, we'll see you on Sunday and you'll hear from us again next Wednesday. All right. See you later, folks. Bye.